around America talking about this dream team. Let's meet their opponents tonight. Gauss is a three-point shooter. James Carter used to play in the USBL and CBA. These are experienced, good guards for the Puerto Rican team. We'll see how they handle the pressure from the United States. At forward for Puerto Rico, Jose Ortiz. He was Pac-10 MVP at Oregon, drafted by the Utah Jazz, Jerome Mincy. Played at University of Alabama, Birmingham, and was the last player cut on a UB Brown team of the New York Knicks. And the center, Ramon Rivas, who was a draft choice of the Celtics. He is a wide-body truckload and a rough player in the middle, and he may provide some resistance for the United States when the Puerto Rican team plays that zone defense. Ramon Dalmau is the head coach of Puerto Rico. They're a good basketball team. They lost only one game in this tournament. Starting for Dream Team, Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson at the guards. This is the fifth different starting lineup in five games for the U.S. At the forwards tonight, it'll be Pippen and Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley is the leading scorer for the United States, averaging 18.3 points per game. And starting at center, Patrick Ewing, 11.7 points and 4.7 rebounds. And it almost doesn't matter, since there have been five different starting lineups, who Chuck Daly, and you see him standing by assistant coach Mike Krzyzewski, who they use, because often the game really gets started about five or six minutes in when the first substitutions are made. Well, I think it's going to be interesting tonight for Puerto Rico, because in watching them play last night, the guys they come off the bench with are very experienced players, but they do not have good speed. A couple good shooters, one is a very good leader, but they do not have good speed and quickness. So when that team substitutes and comes in, we'll have to see if they can handle the speed and quickness coming off the United States bench. Big win for Puerto Rico last night in Argentina's game, as you look at Cotton Fitzsimmons, now in management with the Phoenix Suns. The Puerto Rican team won 92-85, but it was 88-85 with only a minute left before a very big, big block by Edwin Peyote. And there is Ortiz, Jose Rafael Ortiz. He went to Oregon State. Ramon Rivas played shortly with the Boston Celtics. Doug Collins talked to Ortiz just prior to the game and said, you're on TNT tonight. He says, <laughs> yeah. I'm aware of that. Yeah, R Ramon Rivas and, and Jerome Mincy both were talking. They're excited about this opportunity to play. Jerome Mincy was very realistic. Somebody came up to him before the game and said, how do you think you're going to do it? And he said, I, I think the United States will kill us tonight. <laughs> I might point out that even though this is a semifinal game, the berths for the Olympics in Barcelona have already been won by Brazil, Venezuela, U.S., and Puerto Rico. These games are only to determine the champions and second and third place in this basketball tournament of the Americas. There is no seeding per se with the 12-team pools that play in Barcelona. FIBA does put together two pools and try to balance the competition, but whether or not you finish first, second, or third here has very little, if any, effect on how you get seated or placed in the pools when you get to Barcelona. I think as we watch this game unfold tonight, too, this will be the, the most rugged team the United States has played along the front line. We'll have to see how the banging goes inside, but with Mincy, Ortiz, and Rivas, a very big, strong front line. This is Rivas, number 11. James Carter with the drive and the Michael Jordan-like spin move that doesn't follow. Rebound out quickly to Pippen. Barkley. Run down by Carter. I'm sure a lot of people are at home are wondering, why don't teams hold the ball in the United States? Use more of the shot clock. Try to slow the tempo of this game down because the defense is so good, Bob. They get out and they pressure the ball. They force you to break down your offense and take quick shots. Jerome Mincy misses a three-point attempt, and here is Pippen and Barkley. An example of the speed on the transition for this dream team. See, if the rebound goes long, there's no way the Puerto Rican front line can get back defensively. You're going to see a lot of fast break opportunities, three on two, two on one, because the big front line just cannot run with the United States team. They can bang in a slow half-court game like this using the clock, but if it's speed and quickness, they have no chance. Into Rivas. Bumps into Patrick Ewing right in the check, and Ewing grabs a hold of his sternum. Looks like he's all right. Rivas popped in pretty good there. Ewing misses the short jumper, controlled by Rivas to James Carter. 
Remember international rules, 30 second shot clock. The court's only approximately 90 feet long. That's about four feet shorter and about three feet narrower than an NBA court. Foul against Patrick Ewing. Looks early in the ball game that Puerto Rico is going to take the time. They're not going to shoot a lot of quick outside shots. They're going to at least make an attempt to get the ball inside, maybe get some fouls, get some opportunities to shoot the ball inside. Long jump shots mean long rebounds. So here's a long shot. If it doesn't go, you're going to long rebound, and you got an opportunity for the fast break. That time, Mincy picks off the board. Here is Ortiz. He hit some three-pointers last night against Argentina. And Puerto Rico has a 3-2 to lead. You must get up on him and make him put the ball on the floor. If you let him sit there and look with that little set shot, he has pretty good range, as you said. We saw that last night. Michael Jordan is fouled by Gauss. He's going to have his hands full, but so do all the NBA guards. Gauss is 6'5". He's a three-point shooter, number six, and an experienced veteran. The team has started a little bit slowly tonight. Remember, they had the day off yesterday. I think their energy level is up, but they're working themselves into this game. Magic with the pass inside to Michael Jordan. Missed the reverse. The ball belongs to Team USA. Magic Johnson posted. Has it stripped away by Carter, but Ewing hits the 16 footer. Patrick Ewing is starting to get his timing back. After hurting his thumb, he was a little bit off with his shooting, was not confident handling the basketball. The last two games, he's played very, very well, looking much better in the post. Rivas. Good move inside past Patrick Ewing and before either Johnson or Barkley could get there. Rivas played some for the Celtics in 1989. Pippen on the drive to you. See, Scotty Pippen, you just can't match him. Here he is as a small forward or as a big guard. You've got either Michael Jordan or Scotty Pippen being played by Mincy. Can't do it. The, the speed and quickness there, that will always be a mismatch for them. Mincy is not healthy enough. He cannot post up right now because of a bad Achilles. Barkley with the easy steal smiled all the way down court for the Thunder Jam, 8-5. USA. Remember, keep our eyes on turnovers and points off turnovers. The United States has been tremendous in that phase here at the Tournament of the Americas. Remember also that Puerto Rico has played five games in five days. They had to play in the quarterfinals last night. Yeah, that's right. They did not have the day off. Gauss for three. Jordan got a hand on it. Ewing to Johnson. Magic all the way goes for the left hand. You just marvel at, at Magic Johnson. The timing, again, played basketball only one time this year at the NBA All-Star Game, was the MVP there, and comes in, and I know he's been playing a lot of pickup basketball, Bob, but it's just not the same. The fact that he has the kind, this kind of timing is, is incredible. Rebus against Ewing again. That's As two fouls on Patrick. Right That'll be two. Let's put you in a tough spot. Now you've got to come in with David Robinson, so... <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what will happen with David Robinson, only the former defensive player of the year in the NBA. Magic Johnson has only one basket in this game, but it is vintage Magic. Well, you know, Magic Johnson loves to pass so much. Everybody knows that. He likes to get everybody involved. But as he makes a break, if you see it here, if we stop it right there, you see this is uh, Jose Ortiz. He's afraid to leave Charles Barkley, so he sort of fakes it Magic. Magic keeps the dribble, and he tries to go back, and Magic takes the ball right to the basket. So knowing when to make the pass and when to make the drive, and Magic Johnson at 6 feet 9, once he gets in there, the uh, you're not going to be able to stop him. He's going to be able to finish over this uh, Puerto Rican team because they're really not shot blockers. USA missed their, was one of four when they started this game, hit their last four shots as Robinson is in for Patrick Ewing, who goes out with two early fouls. Rivas spinning inside. Robinson got a piece of it. Run down by Pippen. Out to Jordan. Well, they're really going inside to Ramon Rivas. Really giving him a lot of opportunities to work oh. on the same move we just saw the last time down the floor by Magic. Lost the handle on it this time. Here is James Carter. Formerly of the CBA and the USBA. USPL. He was looking for Ortiz. He was touched by the USA. 30-second you know, shot clock. Bob, I think when, when Puerto Rico has an opportunity and they can get an easy basket, they want to take it, but they do not want to get caught up into an up-and-down style game. The United States averaging about 120 points a game in this tournament, so they do not want to play that style of game, but if they get some easy baskets, they've got to try to take them. Carter showing some quickness there. Rivas, number 11, to Ortiz. Number 
number nine is Carter. Four seconds on the shot clock. Mincy hits the three. Jerome Mincy. He can do that. He can spot up and shoot the shot. Again, you must make Jerome Mincy put the ball on the floor. He has a sore Achilles tendon. He's lost a lot of his speed and quickness, but he's a, still a very good stand-up shooter. Rico's already taken five three-pointers in this game. Hit two of them. Robinson. Hard in the rebounds. No whistle and traveling call. Here's the jump shot by Jerome Mincy. Magic Johnson gave help, and really, Scotty Pippen didn't need it. He had his man covered. I think the one thing the United States, if they do have any lapses, it's sometimes being sucked into the lane and allow the guy to take the three-point shot. So you must stay with the three-point shooters at 20 feet six. That's a very short shot for these great players. Michael Jordan playing Gauss, who is their three-point specialist on this team. Carter, not so strong shooting from the outside, but is a good penetrator. Yeah. On Magic Johnson. 18 fouls before you shoot the one and one in each half here. So we'll keep track of the team foul situation as we go along. You know, the, the one thing you have to really be worried about is international officiating. You never know from game to game. These NBA players are, are used to having a little bit more consistent game call. Ortiz has his shot blocked. Robinson caused Rivas to miss. Pippen to Barkley. Controlled by Gauss. The Bob to finish that thought. The international officiating sometimes, you have to be very careful not to let them disrupt your game because some of the calls are bizarre. I was there. I've been in a situation <laughs> where two officials do not speak the same language and they argue over who made the call and they start fighting over the basketball. It can be some bizarre situations. David Robinson, David Robinson called for a personal yeah. here. Fourth team foul on the United States. The officials tonight in this game are Alberto Garcia, as you look at the U.S. bench, from Argentina, and Alan Richardson of England. 10-8, Team USA. It's an amazing thing right now about the United States. On the floor, you have Scottie Pippen, Michael Jordan, and Magic Johnson, all guys that can get the outlet pass and create on the fast break. Barkley with the offense is forward, up strong, he draws the foul. It's on number four, Jose Ortiz, his first personal. He's averaging 18 and a half points and 10 rebounds a game. Three of the top five rebounders in this tournament play for Puerto Rico. If you can limit second shots by the United States, although they're shooting such a great percentage, if you can limit their second shots and take away a little bit of the tremendous fast break they have, now you make them play a little bit in a half court, you have a chance to slow the game down a little bit but when you get second and third shots as the united states has been able to do throughout the tournament and then you do a great job on the defensive boards and you run out and get easy scores you know you have a 30 40 point ball game before you know it and that's what's happened in this tournament the americas teams are devastated normally by halftime see we switched michael jordan has now switched over uh, to play against carter using his speed and quickness allowing magic johnson to play jerome mincy who does not have the lateral movement Rebus tried to get it into Ortiz, broken up in the middle, back on the fast break, Magic, with a jam! An unusual jam off the break for Magic Johnson, known for everything but his jumping ability. Well, you know, I saw Michael Jordan during the free throw, when Barkley was shooting free throws, he said, let me take Carter, you take Mincy, let me use my quickness. Speaking of quickness, Barkley hit his head on the floor when he went down, let's hope he's all right. Timeout, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico gets a timeout. Barkley also played a sore ankle here. And was certain the Boston Celtics, the trainer for Team USA, out looking at Charles Barkley. He popped his head hard right on the floor and right near a group of photographers. Yeah, I don't know whether he hit a camera. It looked like, Bob, as he might have came down, he might have caught the back of a camera and see all the cameras laying there in the guy's lap, the photographers. I hope that he did not split his head. You see Ed Lacerte out there now looking and he's got the towel that's normally a a sign of possibly a cut we'll have to wait and see and we know the international rule is if there's any cut or whatever you must go out of the game and get the bleeding stop it happened the other night to bill winnington uh, in the canadian game barkley injuring his head on that layup attempt it's 14 to 8 and it looks as though he will not be staying in the game carl malone replacing him he will shoot the free throws for Barkley. Now remember the NBA rules. We watched this. Charles Barkley going in. Jose Ortiz tries to block the shot. He catches Charles. He's going to go in the locker room now with Ed Lacerte. And as he falls there, 
it looked like he might hit his head on the camera. Now, let me go through the NBA rule, which is different than the FIBA rule, obviously. Carl Malone comes in and shoots the free throws. Charles Barkley is allowed to come back. In the NBA, had Charles Barkley not been able to shoot his free throws, then the opposing coach comes down and says, I want so-and-so to shoot the free throws, and the injured player cannot come back into the game. So that is the difference in the rule. Carl Malone has had, for him, a less than spectacular tournament. He said publicly yesterday that the injury to John Stockton definitely bothered him because he was so used to playing with his Utah point guard and also said he has been very aware of avoiding injury in this game. And Doug, as you well know, that kind of attitude sometimes can be a problem as well as a help to yourself. Yeah, I think you have to be very careful of, of trying to be on cruise control sometimes. That, that's when you have a chance of getting hurt. Magic with the steal to Michael. Well, the defensive switch has paid off. Magic has done a good job on Jerome Mincy and Michael Jordan. The pressure he's putting on Carter up the floor has totally disrupted this Puerto Rican attack. Display of anger from Michael Jordan about the first time we've seen that this year. The United States has scored eight straight points. Well, you see Magic is getting up and he's taking away Jerome Mincy's drive. He knows that he can't take a pass to him. And here's Michael a little fumbling on the pass, but is able to gather it with his great ability and still finish the shot. I think Michael wanted to dunk that one, but on the fumble had to just worry about making the easy score. Javier Colon, number 10, and number 7, Edwin Peyote in the ball game for Puerto Rico. Now, number 12, Morales, is an excellent shooter. As you see, Rivas, again, with a great move. Here he is. He's an excellent shooter. You've got to take away the standstill shot, but he's very slow, and Pippen will have a field day on the fast break against him, so keep your eyes open on that matchup. U.S. up by 10, 12.07 to go, first half. Magic Johnson backing in and dishing it to Carl Malone. Well, you've got a terrible matchup right now. Cologne there is a point guard is about looks to be about 5'11 and trying to guard Magic Johnson at 6'9. Here is Peyote. He has great speed against Michael Jordan. Didn't get the layup to fall. Malone to Michael. Three quick trips for Puerto Rico. They got nothing out of it. Oh, what a great pass by Scotty Pippen. Tremendous. All in one motion, Bobby. Caught it and flipped it over his back and over his shoulder to David Robinson. What a wonderful pass. U.S. on a 12-0 run. That guy can shoot. the three. The scouting report on him, that guy could shoot the ball. You've got to get up on him, and I'm sure that P.J. Carlissimo and Mike Krzyzewski, who scouted this team, have told this team, you've got to take away this guy's shooting. He's a tremendous outside player. U.S. 22-11, 11.04 to go first half. Pippen, 4-3. 2-3 zone that time by Puerto Rico. The first possession we've seen of zone belongs to Puerto Rico. What's the great pass, Bob, here by Scotty Pippen? The, on the rebound, over the shoulder, no look to David Robinson. That's the kind of unselfish play we've seen all week from this team. Rivas being defended by David Robinson, the double team. Here is Colon. Number four is Ortiz. The Ortiz and Carl Malone have seen each other in Utah. They were together on the Utah Jazz for a while. Three on one. Pippen with the two-handed jam from Magic Johnson. Is that, is that a nightmare if you're Puerto Rico? Magic Johnson in the middle, coming down on the break with Scottie Pippen on one wing and Michael Jordan on the other. Whoever gets it's going to dunk it. Three assists for Magic. Puerto Rico only four for 17. Drexler and Mullen will be into the game for the United States in just a moment. Rivas just having a nightmare inside. They have really gone strong to Rivas here in this first half. He, he is getting a lot of opportunities. The problem is he's trying to score against either Patrick Ewing or David Robinson. Not an easy task, but he is working very hard and has made some nice moves inside. And Ewing has two fouls, and Robinson has one caused by his aggressiveness. The officials would not let Mullen and Rexler into the game on this play. Trying to run a screen for Morales to free him up for a shot. Colon is left open. That was a two. Pippen on the run has Jordan. Well, Michael just strong on that one. <laughs> Cologne back defensively, and Michael just just backed him right down and made the shot. Magic Johnson to Pippen and the foul. 
Magic Johnson, what a great pass. Loves to pass the basketball. Magic takes a rest. He has four assists. Four points. Look at this pass. Left-handed to Scotty Pippen. Shovel pass. Scotty with the beautiful layup and the opportunity for the three-point play. This is what we've seen again all week. I know it sounds redundant, but the tremendous passing. And when you've got a guy like Magic Johnson who thinks pass first, it becomes very, very contagious for the rest of his team. And they've all made the pass. But, Bob, they've made the simple play, not the spectacular pass that you see in the All-Star game many times where you get 30 turnovers. They've kept their turnovers down to about 14 per game. Mullen into the game now, along with Jordan, Malone, Robinson, and Clyde Drexler. A 25-6 USA run since Puerto Rico last led 5-4. A quick reminder of the different rules in international play. The NBA rules there in the center under that column. On the right, you notice that FIBA, it's two 20-minute halves. The zone defense, of course, is legal. 30-second shot clock. Three-point line, which is certainly significant. These are routine jumpers for Jordan and Mullen and Drexler and the like. The foul limit, five. And there are some other rule differences, too, that we'll talk to you about as we go along during the ballgame. You know, one we saw last night that I was not aware of was, you know, you can get the basket in, in international play, and if you get a charging foul and get the score, the basket counts, and the other team just gets possession of the basketball. So I, I did not realize that, that rule was in effect. I thought it was the NBA rule where any offensive foul took away the basket. 29-13, USA, 9-17 to go first half. Well, they've gone 2-3 little matchup zone here. Keep your eye on Chris Mullen. He's the shooter with this group. From Jordan. Bingo. Play zone. You better not leave Chris Mullen. You got Michael Jordan and Drexler to create. Get in the lane now. Force the zone to compact and then dish out to the great shooter. Ortiz trying to get something done in the paint. Oh, great rebound. Great rebound. That is Edwin Peyote. He has a chiseled body. He's 6'2", 180 pounds, and is it physically in appearance is a shorter version of Michael Jordan. Great lever. Drexler for three. I told Clyde he's got to play tonight. This this crowd was in a funk the other night when they announced he would not play. You lose Danny Ainge and then you get Clyde Drexler and they say he's not going to play. This crowd was pouting the other night. Portland signed Rod Strickland today. That was controversial. We'll talk about a lot of NBA news at halftime, by the way. There's been several player transactions that we'll update you on. And Christian Leitner will be coming into the ball game. Charles Barkley just came back out onto the floor. It looks like he has a Band-Aid on the back of his head. He might have gotten cut. That's why he might have had to leave the game. You cannot see it, obviously, from there. But there's a Band-Aid on the back of his head, so he might have a slight cut and might have been bleeding. 35-15 USA. So Christian Leitner is an excellent shooter and also a great passer from the high post. So they'll try to go to him and let him create some passing lanes. Uh, Malone just created his own lane with the drive, but missed the lay-in. Peyote out quickly. Punched away by the lightning hands of Chris Mullen. Four on two. Watch Mullen. Ripping it away from Clyde Drexler. Timeout on the floor. We'll be back to Portland Memorial Coliseum. So Charles Barkley got one stitch to the back of his head, playing already with a sore ankle. Before the game, Doug talked to Coach Chuck Daly and asked him if he was concerned about these injuries. Yeah, I am a little bit. There's five or six guys. You know, you've got Ewing with the thumb and all these little things that happen. Some of them were around prior there were injuries but uh, I think also the fact that as you know in the league guys would play you know uh, certain nights with little injuries they might have here but um, not overly concerned but a little concerned you know you get down to it, it going to Barcelona we're going to need a pretty full complement of players because the competition is going to be stiffer Brendan Sir Bill Burtker over there and called me and uh, very definitely they had seen some of these teams play in Puerto Rico a week ago and they're over there scouting the uh, other European teams and they're, they're pretty solid. Charles Barkley has returned, has a Band-Aid on the back of his hand, handling the ball now into the game. 30-year-old Federico Lopez in at guard, along with number 14, Eddie Cassiano. As 
Puerto Rico tries to find a combination to strengthen things. And number 13, Edgar Leon, a forward also in for Puerto Rico. Magic Johnson misses the three and rattles back in. It'll be a three. That's called a shooter's touch. Magic with a soft shot. The ball hits the front of the rim, bounces up, and the rim was kind to Magic Johnson that time for three points. Christian Leitner was waiting on the doorstep, though, for the tip, and he was right there for the offensive rebounded opportunity. Boy, it doesn't take but one blink as these Puerto Rican players are finding out to have that ball knocked away. As soon as they look up on the dribble, bang somebody's got their hand on it remember i talked about though when the, the puerto rican team substituted they lose a lot of speed and quickness morales uh, not very quick lopez so they they really lose that speed and quickness that they have with their frontline guards you have to watch this team they have on the floor now ortiz misses the three rebound magic johnson a lot of quick shots right now from puerto rico they're beginning. very impatient the foul on number 14 eddie cassiano Eddie's one of the young Puerto Rican players, only 19 years old. This must be some experience for him. 38-15 U.S., 6.30 to go, first half. U.S. will play the winner of the Brazil-Venezuela game, which is coming up as the second game here tonight on Sunday for the basketball tournament of the America's Championship. Power move inside Malone. He draws the foul. It's on Edgar Leon. Puerto Rico shooting 21%. Only 5 of 24. USA 15 of 24. A lot of those are coming on fast break points. Well, we talked about the fast break opportunities, whether it be off turnovers or long rebounds. United States 18 to nothing on the fast break right now. That's the difference in the ball game. You see a 24-point game right now, but the transition opportunities, United States, good initial defense, good rebounding, and then they love to get out and run. They're a devastating fast break team. Alone short arms the free throw. Rebound to Edgar Leon. This is Lopez. He's a very heady floor leader. You know, doesn't have speed and quickness, but very, very solid. Ortiz trying to work against Leitner, and he does so successfully, draws the foul from the only college player on the Dream Team, and Ortiz will go to the free throw line. Now, I talked a little bit about the other night about Christian Leitner, and he's getting into a habit of getting a lot of reaching fouls. That time, Jose Ortiz backed into him, he created the contact, got some space, knocked Leitner back on his heels, and as he went up to shoot the shot, Leitner lazily reached in and got the foul. That's a touch foul in the NBA. You've got to get rid of that. You cannot, as a post player, get those kind of fouls. What Christian's going to have to do is when a guy comes back and tries to bang into him, he's got to brace himself and not be going back with a blow to give the guy space to shoot. 21-point U.S. advantage. Mullen kicks it to Magic Johnson, who takes the drive. Offensive foul. It's three-second lane violation. One pass too many. 39-18. Morales looking for his jump shot. He's 6'5", but Mullen was right in his face. I don't remember this Cassiano last night playing very much, but he's a left-handed player. Number 14 there for Puerto Rico. He, he looked like he had a nice little jumper. That time he drove right. Cassiano, was, did, he didn't play last that's night. That's right, and he finished his shot very nicely. I don't remember him uh, being a factor at all in their team the last couple games, in fact. How about this matchup problem? Somebody's going to get an open shot. Drexler, hard to the hoop, missed the jam. Ortiz was up there. Mullen doesn't get it to fall. This is Cassiano on the drive now. He's a left-handed player, but you see a nice little move there. Finish the shot. Good concentration. Double team. Drexler gets the pass, and he takes it to the basket. Looks like his knee's feeling a little bit better. The foul was on Lopez. Chris Mullins been playing about 23 minutes per game. Remember, the games are 40 minutes long here. Lopez has no idea how fast these hands are. Mullen gives it to Malone for the power jam. 
that's the unselfish play. I mean, Mullen had two points. He, he gave it off to Carl Malone. Now, Mullen had just missed two free throws. You'd think the normal thing you want to do is go in and get the two points back. He gives it to Carl Malone, knowing now that he's going to get one this time. Lopez having a nightmare. Mullen will take it this time. Lopez the, is a heady floor leader, does see the floor well, but is a full step and about a second too slow. Every player on Team USA has scored a basket except for Christian Leitner, and no player has attempted more than four field goals to give you some idea of the scary balance of this basketball team. Carter back in. It's punched away by Pippen. As we watched Puerto Rico against Argentina last night, Doug, you felt that these guards were just going to be in a lot of trouble in this ballgame. Well, you, last night, the big front line was the difference in the game for Puerto Rico, but as Argentina picked up their defense and they got out after them, they forced a lot of turnovers, got back in the game, almost stole the game late, but again, another deflection and the pass by Mullen behind the back, and there's they almost, but they did play with it a little too much. Finally, it goes in. So that's what you have to be careful about being too unselfish. Scotty gave it to, to Carl Malone for the dunk, and Malone gives it back to him. And that's where you got to be careful not to get hurt. Somebody comes flying in there on your back to try to block the shot. Chris Mullen ends up with two points on the tip in. Number 14, Cassiano, the 19-year-old guard, launched an NBA-length three-pointer that drew nothing but air. You see the team that Chuck Daly has on the floor right now. Scotty Pippen's actually the point Ooh. guard. You've got Chris Mullen. And Drexler with Malone and Christian Leitner. No one's going to pick up Malone. He'll dribble down and just shoot a three. Rebound to 13, Edgar Leon. 47-20. 3.30 to go in the first half. The U.S. has been winning these games by an average of 56 points a game. Drexler lost the handle. Mullen is fouled by number 14, Eddie Cassiano. Here's the turnover. Scotty Pippen with his long arms forces the turnover. Mullen, the nice behind the back wraparound of Scotty Pippen with his great speed and quickness runs it down. He's going to hand it off to Malone. Malone says, No, I don't want it. You take, no, you got it. No, I'll miss it. And Mullen says, Well, I'll take the two if you guys don't want them. So Mullen with seven points in this ballgame. Second leading scorer on Team USA. Coming up at halftime on the Kraft Halftime Report, we'll have news and notes from around the NBA, an update on the European Olympic Tournament, the qualifying tournament there. And a, a feature I think you'll really enjoy seeing, Larry and Magic from Bowls to Friends, the story of their career as opponents starting back at Michigan State and Indiana State in 1979. 19-point U.S. Bowls. Make that 29. 39. <laughs> as if it would matter. See, the difference, in, if you look at these two teams, James Carter, number nine, shooting the free throws right now for Puerto Rico, has great speed and quickness. He's six feet tall. The frightening thing about it is Scotty Pippen has more speed and quickness than he's six eight. That, that, therein lies the difference in the two teams when you want to think about the perimeter people. Mullen handling the ball. Ortiz with a foul, and Malone goes to the line. That's a well-executed play that time by the United States. They ran a little give-and-go. Chris Mullen rub cut. He goes to the corner, and Scotty Pippen runs screen roll. You see at the jump out now, Chris Mullen works back behind the ball, and the counteraction drops the ball right back into the post. Good ball movement, and what that does is, is when they jump out big on the screen roll, to take the turn away from you to get to the basket. You counteract and drop the ball right into the post to the guy who set the screen, Carl Malone, who gets the three-point play. And Malone has 12 points, as uh, it looks as though Team USA has decided to get Malone more involved here, as Carl has been kind of taking a back seat during the tournament. Ortiz with a long bank shot, that's for two. And Ortiz has 10 to lead all the Puerto Rican scorers. No look, Drexler to Malone. Call three seconds on Carl Malone. See, in the international play, that three seconds, they really watch that. The, the lane is wider, the trapezoidal lane, they watch that 
more than they do in the United States. We see more three-second calls, I think, here in this week than we see in the NBA all season long. 19 feet across on the baseline down there. Morales on the give and go. However, Leon couldn't get it to go. Drexler. Finger rolls by the glass. Thirty-point U.S. lead. Well, that was a quick move. Drexler to Malone. Malone has fourteen. Have you ever seen better passing and decision making with great athletes on the fast break and unselfish play? These these guys. And they don't practice that much either. Chuck Daly realizes that it's better for them to be fresh, but this is incredible. There's the 19-year-old with the drive to the hoop, Eddie Cassiano, who didn't see much action prior to this game for Puerto Rico. Drexler, alone. Offensive foul. We're going to see Clyde Drexler going coast to coast. This is something we see with the Portland Trailblazers. He gets that head down and he's going right to the rim. Takes it right to the basket and finishes. And then the next time down the floor, the great pass to Carl Malone for the easy basket. Minute 12 remaining in the first half. Scotty Pippen picks up his second personal foul. 26 to nothing on fast break points. We talked about rebounding, avoiding turnovers, and which lead to the fast break points for Puerto Rico. Not happening. See, that's why you can't hold the ball in the United States. They have a 30 second shot clock. You say spread them out, use the clock. But when someone is, is chasing you and pressuring you all over the floor, not letting you make that next pass, what happens is panic sets in. Now you put your head down and you want to drive the ball to the basket. You take a quick shot, and then they're off and running the other way with bad floor balance. We talked about Puerto Rico has a very big, strong front line, but they cannot run with this United States front line. You've seen Malone out on the break. You've seen uh, Charles Barkley when he, he was in the game. So the front line just outrunning the front line of Puerto Rico and the unselfish play of the United States perimeter players to get them the ball. As you saw, Carter was fouled on a three-pointer and got and sank three free throws. Mullen answers. Every shot's going in for Chris Mullen. You can just see it. He stepped back. Leitner did a nice job that time after the double screen. Stepped back and set another screen for Mullen to get in the open jumper. Under a minute to go in the half. U.S. by 30. Long range jumper. That's a three Edgar from Edgar Leon. Leon. 30 seconds to go in the half. USA shooting 64% from the field. The lob into Malone, who has 16 first half points. Malone had only been averaging 12 and a half a game. Puerto Rico would like to get the last shot. Nice shot by Ortiz. He has 12 points. He uses the glass well. Nice touch on the ball. At the end of the first half. And at the end of the first half, Team USA 61, Puerto Rico 34. We'll be back with a Kraft halftime report right after this. Kraft halftime report brought to you by Kraft. Kraft proudly sets the USA basketball training table. At halftime, USA 61 to 34, and this team made up, except for Christian Leitner, of all NBA stars. We continue to keep you up to date on NBA news. Just with the draft only a week ago, there have been quite a few player transactions in the NBA. We reported on the big freeway trade last Wednesday night, and now there have been some more today. For instance, the Trailblazers have signed Rod Strickland to a multi-year contract. Understand it's uh, six years, $12 million. Houston Rockets have acquired Greg Kite from Orlando for two second-round picks. Some other NBA transactions that took place. The New York Knicks, excuse me, this is the one that's the uh, $12 million for six years, have tendered an offer sheet to free agent Harvey Grant, the New York Knicks, and in doing so,
clear some room under the salary cap. The Knicks have renounced the rights of the contracts of James Donaldson, Kennard Winchester, and Patrick Eddy. And Doug Collins, let's go back first of all to the Portland Trailblazers, uh, who lost Danny Ainge, of course, as he signed with Phoenix, signing Rod Strickland now, undisclosed terms to that contract. What is your thinking? Somewhat of a controversial signing. Well, I, I think what they've said is we need help at guard, and, and Rod Strickland obviously is a very talented player, has had uh, his moments in the NBA of, of greatness. He's had his other moments that haven't been so great, but I think that he gives them very, a very talented player. Uh, Terry Porter can slide over and play the two spot, and he can play with Rod Strickland, or Rod Strickland can play with Drexler, so it gives them some versatility. Uh, the one thing is, Rod Strickland's not a great outside shooter. One of the things that Portland needs is a guy that can stick that outside shot. They're going to really miss Danny Ainge's shooting. So I think in the wake of losing Danny Ainge, their quick reaction was to go out and sign Rod Strickland. We'll have to wait and see what the effect is. By the way, Rod Strickland is here in Portland tonight at this ball game, and we saw him earlier talking to uh, Rick Adelman, the coach, and they'll be having a lot of chat between now and the beginning of the season next year. Now let's bring you up to date on the European Championships. First of all, who is qualified for the Olympics so far? Spain is the host country. Angola won their region, as did Australia and China. The four qualifiers from the Tournament of the Americas, USA, Brazil, Puerto Rico, and Venezuela. Now, the European tournament. Here's what it looks like right now. Lithuania's basketball team qualified for the 1992 games, 53 years after it was annexed by the Soviet Union. Arvidas Sabonis scored 28 points. Sharonis Marcellonis added 20 as Lithuania defeated Slovenia 90 to 73. Valeri Tikoniko scored 40 as the Commonwealth of Independent States beat Israel. This is action today, 101-85. Croatia routed Czechoslovakia 84-68. 21 points for Drazen Petrovic. And Tony Kukoc had 13 points, 9 assists, and 8 rebounds. And Germany defeated Italy 109-91 as Shrimp returned from about a food poisoning and scored 37 points and 19 rebounds. Only Slovenia could possibly move in to that top four group. So that's what the European championships look like. They're still waiting to determine who will be moving into the final 12 for Barcelona. Well, both of them stand six feet, nine inches tall. One's a guard, the other a forward. They came into national prominence during the National Collegiate Tournament back in 1979. We're, of course, talking about Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. Most people, of course, think that Michael Jordan has had a great impact on the game, but the fingers all point to those two who helped the NBA make a turnaround and become literally the most popular sport in the world by almost anybody's definition today. So now, as they play together here on this team for their last hurrah on the court, they play on the same team for the same goal. Their storied rivalry began in 1979. Magic won the first battle, an NCAA championship. They entered the NBA together and would forever wrestle each other for basketball supremacy. Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, the principal figures of this drama between the Celtics and the Lakers. Bird and Magic one-on-one. -on -one. A shot for the ages. Quickly goes out to Bird. Bird a three-pointer. Bird goes for three. I fear no one but Larry Bird. To the left goes Magic. He's got it. Five seconds left. Magic down the middle. Just what I thought. A hook shot at 12. Good! Magic's just a great basketball player. He's the best I've ever seen. You know, I... Unbelievable. I don't know what to say. They went head-to-head -head three times in the 80s in search for basketball's top prize. Every time it was a duel. When one threw down the gauntlet, the other responded immediately. They faced each other in a TV commercial. And in February of this year, when Magic's jersey was retired, Bird was by his side, promising one more curtain call. He's not, he's not done yet because we're going to go to Barcelona and bring back the gold for everyone here in the United States. So many times America has watched us battle each other. Um, and so you get divided. You have to cheer for one or the other. And now they won't have to do that anymore. They're, hey, we're pulling for our boys. It's a great opportunity for both of us. You know, he's retired, and my retirement's coming soon. So uh, 
you know, I don't know how much longer I'm going to play, so getting an opportunity to play with him for one last time is a great, great honor. As the Dream Team gathered and began practicing, Bird admitted to a slow start, but knew his point guard would find him eventually. I'm struggling a little bit now with my shooting, so uh, he's not passing to me as much. <laughs> but once I get that down, I think he'll cover my way a little bit more. Once in Portland, Magic knew who had the hot hand. Bird and Magic lead USA Basketball, they'll never quite lose the competitive fire that brought the NBA to new heights. Me and Larry will always have a rivalry. Even when this is over, we'll probably meet him at the playground and just go at each other like dogs and cats. It's just that way. God put us here for that, and we will be doing it to the end. USA leading 61-34. We'll be back to recap the dream team play in this tournament right after this. U.S. with a 61-34 lead here at halftime. They've been winning in this tournament of the Americas by an average of 56 points per game. In case you missed any of the highlights or would just simply like to see them again, let's look back on the tournament of the Americas. Festivities got underway last Saturday as Magic Johnson led the USA Dream Team onto the floor for the first time for opening ceremonies. All eight countries competing in the Tournament of Americas were introduced before a sellout crowd at Memorial Coliseum. The hoop action began with the United States women's Olympic basketball team taking on the Brazilians in an exhibition match. Six players scored in double figures as the USA rolled to an easy 103-75 win over the defending Pan Am champions. The Brazilian men's team stormed through Group B qualifying into the semifinals with a 4-0 record, looking to meet Team USA in Sunday's final. The legendary Oscar Schmidt is averaging over 31 points per game. Coach Chuck Daly and the Dream Team made their long-anticipated debut against Cuba. Charles Barkley scored 22 points, leading seven players in double figures on the way to a 79-point triumph. Hometown hero Clyde Drexler punctuated the outcome to the delight of the sold-out Coliseum crowd. Guard John Stockton was lost with a leg injury in Game 2 versus Canada, but Magic Johnson brought showtime to Portland as Team USA rolled over the Canadians by 44 points. Defense was the key in Game 3 against Panama as the U.S. had a whopping 16 steals. Chris Mullen came off the bench to hit four of five three-pointers on the way to a game-high 19 points, and the Dream Team was victorious again. Argentina became victim number four in a show of speed and power as Team USA shot 63% from the field. Michael Jordan and Scotty Pippen combined in the most spectacular play of the tournament as the USA won by 41 to finish 4-0 in Pool A play. Team USA leading 61-34 over Puerto Rico at halftime here at Portland Memorial Coliseum. We'll be back to look at the highlights of the first half right after this. Today's halftime highlights brought to you by Phillips Lighting. Let's have a look at some of the highlights in the first half. Here's the defensive pressure. Well, Magic Johnson switched over to Jerome Minty and Michael Jordan took the point guard. It paid off as the United States was able to get out on the break. You see Michael Jordan with two of his four points here in the transition. 19 points off turnovers for the United States. And Scottie Pippen, a great first half, seven rebounds five points and six assists the Drexler over to Carl Malone who also had a big first half 16 points for Carl Malone see the shooting percentage 32 percent for Puerto Rico 65 for the United States but the rebounds the fast breaks the points off turnovers Doug said the keys to the game if Puerto Rico would keep this competitive those third the second third and fourth categories there need to be a whole lot better than they are well you see what happens with turnovers you get easy scores 13 out of 19 19 points off turnovers to five. You got the double in the rebounding. But the thing that impresses me is 19 assists on 24 field goals with only seven turnovers. That lets you know how they're moving the basketball and making the extra pass to get the easy layup. 
Scoring leaders for Puerto Rico, Ortiz, who you see in your picture right there, has 12 points. Carter, 5, and Cassiano. Cassiano came off the bench. He's only 19 years old, the youngest player on this Puerto Rican team, uh, to score and play reasonably well in the last five minutes of the first half. Malone with 16, Mullen 12, and Magic Johnson has 7. To go with four assists. This is the lineup now that we saw the other night to start the second half, although it wasn't Charles Barkley, it was Scottie Pippen, but Ewing and Robinson in the lineup together in the United States went to a half-court trap with two shot blockers, Magic Michael, and it'll be Barkley this time chasing the ball. Let's see if they come out, and this is strictly just to work on. It's not to rub it in to the Puerto Rican team at all, but they've got to work on certain phases of the game they might need over in Barcelona. The half-court trap is one of them with the two big players, Robinson and Ewing, playing at the same time. Barkley, you'll see with a Band-Aid, did take one stitch. He did, in fact, hit his head on the edge of a camera. And has returned to the game. Michael Jordan misses the three. Barkley steals the rebound. Magic Johnson has his ninth point of the night. When you play zone, that's not supposed to happen. You're not allowed, you're not supposed to split the both defenders out front. Magic, though, with his side, just goes right through the lane. It's the easy score. The United States is in man-to-man -man defense right now. That was a horrible shot by Edgar Leon. I think he's trying to get on the scoreboard here, realizing the game is on national television. Ewing with the rebound off the Jordan miss. Number six, Gauss. Number 13 is Edgar Leon. Number 11 is Ramon Rivas for Puerto Rico. Handling the ball now, number 10, Javier Colon. This is Gauss. Barkley with the personal. And the band aid. Cologne inbounds the ball, 30 second shot clock in international play. Rivas alone for a moment. And the bank shot by Edgar Leon, who has five points. 29 point USA lead. Ewing missing. Rebound Leon. Jordan, by the way, has only four points in this game. Michael only took four shots in the first half. Took a three here to start the second half. Not looking for his offense. Very reminiscent of game one against Cuba where he looked to take only six shots in the game. Gauss, usually a good three-point shooter, missed that one from three-point range, and Michael Jordan with a scoop shot. Now he has six. Brazil will play Venezuela in the other semifinal game tonight following this one. The winner of that will play the USA on Sunday for this tournament championship. But all four of these teams in action tonight have advanced to Barcelona and the Olympics. <laughs> Ramon Riva just got away with a forearm shiver against David Robinson. Good pass, dog. Come back, come back, come back. Michael, you look at Michael Jordan here. Magic Johnson just said, good pass, Doug, as the ball came over here to our table. <laughs> Always in the game, isn't he? <laughs> Magic would have shot you to had an assist from really? the table. That man, maybe being a first scoring table of seven. Robertson with the jam. David Robinson. Magic talking now to Javier Colon, who's only six feet tall. You see how Magic Johnson works over him. Barkley with the steal. Ewing one oh. touch. Johnson to Robinson. Now, let's think about that. Barkley with a steal to David, Ro excuse me, to Magic at 6'9", to Ewing at 7 feet, back to David Robinson at 7'1". The ball never touched the floor for the chunk. That, that, that was beautiful. Barkley with his second foul quickly. Now, Barkley's going to get the steal, and he's going to throw the ball ahead. You see Barkley to Magic. Watch this now. Or excuse me, to Ewing to Magic to Robinson. The ball did not touch the floor. That's the way you draw it up. When you're drawing it on the chalkboard, Chuck Daly says, this way we want to run the break, and they said, okay, coach. Patrick Ewing with the rebound. Wanted the outlet to Magic Johnson, but... Three out outlets to David Robinson. <laughs> Interchangeable parts. Now Magic posting against Rivas. Goes to the baby hook. 
Oh, remember that against the Celtics. Oh, yes. Patrick Ewing with the foul. Oh, Patrick would like to have that foul back. He's gotten in foul trouble tonight. He had two quick fouls against Rivas. He had to sit down, and now the reach-in foul. So that's three on Patrick Ewing. I don't think Chuck Daly's going to panic and make a substitution. He'll probably let Patrick play a few more minutes. Chuck told you in an interview before the game that uh, his scouts over in Europe think that Lithuania, Croatia, Germany, independent states, the former Soviet Union, uh, could give some uh, pretty good uh, test well, to think, the team when they get to the Olympics. I think that you look at the, the Lithuanian team with Marcelona, Sabonis, uh, some of the players they have, they're, they're a team that will not be in awe of the United States because they played against them already before, and I think that's important. I think these teams are just happy to play against the United States. Magic Johnson with another easy layup. Magic with 11 points in this game. He's in great shape. These, these teams come into the Tournament of the Americas, and they want their pictures taken with these guys, and... I think the United States is going to see when they get to Barcelona, some of these teams are not going to be in quite as much awe. Ewing saved it, but to Mincy, who gets it ahead to Cologne. Cologne's first basket of the night. 73-39, 15-47 to go in this game from Portland Memorial Coliseum. game here Patrick Ewing who has that shot just in case you wondered well we saw a lot of that in the playoffs against the Chicago Bulls when he stepped out and was hitting that shot he was virtually impossible to stop and now he's gonna have Rolando Blackman to go with him a guard who can score and Hubert Davis a rookie who can really shoot the ball so the Knicks will be able to help on the double teams when go inside to Patrick Ewing next year Edgar Leone is trying to match him basket for basket that was the old Wilt Chamberlain one foot fadeaway David Robinson with the quick footwork. He got the loose ball for the jam, kept alive by Michael Jordan. Remember, Wilt used to have that step back shot that he tried to bank. Tried was the key yeah. word there. 77 39. 38 point lead, largest of the game. Boy, Gauss is just saying, please, Michael Jordan, get off of me and let me get a shot up here. These people are watching on TV. I want to score. Michael is ruthless, so he's not going to give him anything. And doesn't there. He does commit the foul. 38-point lead with 14-30 remaining in this game. That's his second. 14 foul. Timeout. Well, everybody except Christian Leitner, Larry Bird, and John Stockton have scored for the USA with this 38-point lead, 77 to 39, 14 and a half to go in the ball game. And now the senior executive vice president of the Phoenix Suns. I liked it better when I got to call you coach. Cotton Fitzsimmons has joined us. Uh, Cotton, your impressions of looking at this quality of basketball? Well, the only reason those other guys haven't scored, they haven't taken a shot yet because uh, they're just too good. I don't think we'll ever see a team like this again. Uh, I hope not. I hope that we can split it up and let some of the young guys in the country play. I agree with you. Because it's too difficult, you know, for a guy to have hopes and aspirations someday to be on the Olympic team, and he has to be a total all-star in the NBA to make it. That's too tough. Now, Cotton, here you are walking in after fleecing Portland of Danny Ainge. you got Charles Barkley here. You can't be very popular sitting here right now, can you? Have anybody said anything to you yet? Yeah, they've said a few things. They really have. I'm not too popular here right now. And How about coaching him? Well, Charles would be great to coach. Uh, you know, a lot of times people thought he's difficult to coach. Charles just wants to win. I think the Ames thing says that because when Charles came to town for a press conference, he told Jerry Colangelo, if you need to use any of my money to go out and get somebody, you can use it. Tom Chambers jumped right in, did the same thing. We do have Danny Ames now, and I think we've improved our club. Well, is the signing of Rod Strickland a knee-jerk reaction from Portland over the Danny Ames thing, Cotton? I don't know. Uh, I was surprised by it because unless they plan to just play Porter and Strickland and Clyde all the time, uh, I see Strickland really as a point guard. I don't see him as a scoring guard. Yeah, and, and also I think the one thing, maybe they feel Porter being a guy that can slide over and shoot the ball a little bit, but they're definitely going to miss what Danny Ainge gave him in the long-range shooting department. 
nobody wanted to take the shot. Mincy with the drive, handed it to Rivas, and Rivas with about three fakes before he drew the foul. Would you want to take the shot with David Robinson and guys like that around you? And if you get away from David, there's Patrick Ewing waiting. I don't want to take the shot either. They want to have their photo taken. Yeah, they really do. That's been the interesting thing about all of these games. They're more interested in getting the, the jersey of the player that they guarded than really worrying about winning the games because they know they can't win the game. What is your thought, Cotton, on a player like Rivas or Ortiz uh, in this kind of tournament and in the Olympics? Can these players, are they capable of getting back in the NBA? Is there, are they marginal? What, are you, what is your thing? They're very marginal. I think they would always be 10, 11, 12th man, and they're probably better off playing where they are right now probably make more of a steady living because they might get cut after one year. Barkley, Robinson, Ewing, Magic Johnson, and Jordan on the floor. Barkley inside. Oh, oh you see Cotton smiles. There's my like, guy right there. I ought to frown a little bit because really, maybe I gave it up a little early, Doug, because <laughs> when you get Charles on your team and Danny Ainge, uh, we think the Phoenix Suns are going to be a real tough ball club next year. Portland's been whipping us out here. We need to beat the Portland Trailblazers to get to the finals and get a crack at those Bulls. What do you think about the Twin Towers, Robinson Ewing playing at the same time? They're extremely tough. Uh, I was really impressed the way they came out and started the third quarter. Certainly very intimidating. Like that. Well, that answers the question, you know, uh, offensively around the basket, they go so strong to the hoop. And when they have these other guys that uh, Michael Jordan, along with Magic Johnson, that want to feed them, it makes it easy. You know, Cotton, the interesting thing, too, is the, the speed and quickness of our bigger players. You know, Puerto Rico's got power, but they can't get back defensively. Our big guys just outrun them down the floor, as you saw Ewing do the last time. Now, here comes David Robinson. He's going to be the recipient this time. Ortiz with the rebound off the Magic Johnson miss. Magic's quick. He hasn't lost quickness. Well, I'm surprised about the intensity. You know, Chuck uh, Daly and his staff have been able to, to keep the guys focused in. Even though the games are runaways, they keep playing hard and they stay right on their job. You know, Cotton, the one thing I've been impressed with also through obviously the unselfishness. It's a great play by Magic. But you know, in many instances when you get a group of guys like this together, and you've seen it in all-star games, Guys try to make so many spectacular plays that the game gets sloppy. I have not seen that. The, tur the turnovers have been limited, and they've made really the simple play. Well, you know, and that's one of the real keys. Look at Magic going in there. I mean, it's unbelievable, this guy. He just, you know, plays in an all-star game, and now he plays on the Olympic team, walks out there. We said all along he was special, and he certainly is special. 14 points, 6 assists for Magic Johnson tonight in limited time. You know, I think really the coaching staff so far should receive a lot of credit for these guys not really trying to show time all right. the time. They're trying to play the game. And, and again, you know, they, they're making the simple play, and they're so great, and they're, they're, they're so inferior. Sometimes you want to do a little bit too much, and the game gets really ugly. That has not happened here. They've maintained their concentration. And again, I think the way Chuck and his, his staff has approached it, Cotton, is he's given this guy guys time off and allowed them to enjoy themselves knowing that they're going to compete when they get to the game. Yeah, it sounds that way, and it sounds like that their golf score, some of them, is getting a lot better, you know. They're going to be in your category here soon. <laughs> well, no, they can beat me. Matter of fact, uh, there is no one can beat you because you always negotiate on the first tee so well that you don't let that happen. Well, you're I, right. I've heard about you already all the way to Chicago. There's one guy better, Michael Jordan. He can negotiate pretty good himself. <laughs> 84-48, Team USA, 12-15 to go in this ball game. 12,888 sell out here at the Memorial Coliseum. Jordan misses from the corner. Barkley keeps it alive. Who says he liked he liked being traded? Look at the ball in the back. Oh, Michael Jordan said he liked being traded to Phoenix so he could play golf every day. Well, he's got a guy who can play with him. I don't do anything, so he can play with me. How about that play? We've just seen so many highlights. Here's Gauss. That's their good perimeter shooter. Well, he's finally got Michael Jordan off. And Michael Jordan was, was driving him nuts. Now he's finally getting some open shots. Magic Johnson misses. Taking it back in the hoop. There's the baby. Oh, thank you for showing us that again. Well, Kareem caught him that a long time ago when he was a rookie. And he's got a down path. Probably the best hook shooter in basketball. 88-50, 11-20 to go in the game. Cotton, how tempting is it going to be for Magic to want to play next year after playing this well this summer? It's going to be very interesting. I think Magic's the only guy who knows what his health happens to be. This could be a four-point opportunity. Look at look at my man Charles Barkley here. 
going to keep control of the basketball, looks around. In Philadelphia, he'd take a shot right now, Doug. <laughs> a little right now, look at him. He's become an assist man over to Michael Jordan, and who better to throw it to than Michael Jordan? <laughs> well, Senior Executive Vice President Cotton Fitzsimmons, as you look at your guy there, thanks for joining us here at the table. It's great having you with it's us. It's my pleasure, but did luck. you notice that Doug didn't let me answer close? <laughs> Doug doesn't want me to do games. That's it's right, tough. I want you to take my job. Oh, that's right. Get you know, out guys, here. Guys are high. He posts up at the scorer's table. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Cotton Fitzsimmons has joined us at the booth. We'll be back in just a moment to Portland Memorial Coliseum. Magic Johnson and Carl Malone have combined for 16 each to lead the U.S. scores. U.S. leading by 35 points with 11-13 remaining in the ball game. Here's that beautiful baby hook. Robert Parrish, Kevin McHale, Larry Bird were all in the lane in that game when Magic flashed across the paint. And that was the game-winning shot also, the pressure of that to make that over those three players. James Carter back in Puerto Rico. This is Ramon Rivas spinning inside. It'll fall, and he draws the foul. Well, that was a very powerful move by Rivas there along the baseline. Nice spinning drive. On David Robinson is third. Not only does he make the move against David Robinson, but watch Patrick Ewing comes over to, to try to disrupt this shot. So that's a very difficult shot off the glass. Excellent concentration to get the finish by Rebos. I think he's played pretty well in the tournament of the Americas. He's rebounded well, and he showed much better offensive skills than I ever remember him having, either at Temple or with the Boston Celtics, although with Boston we did not see much of him with... Mikhail Bird and Perry. As Tim Hardaway would say, Rebos has got skill. <laughs> Barkley to Ewing, almost traveled. There's that famous turnaround baseline jumper. You know, it's funny you say he almost traveled. Does that mean he traveled and it wasn't called? I always wondered that. Almost, almost traveled. Almost traveled, is that? He thought about traveling. Okay. That's what. There's Soto, he's number 15, who just threw the ball away and committed the foul, getting his first action. He's played very little for Puerto Rico in the tournament. See what Charles does very well. He's done that twice now in this in this half. The guy has tried to make the entry pass into the post. He's dropped back and stolen the pass. So what happens when you drop back off the man like that, Bob? You must, as a player, offensive player, you've got to drive the ball and force the guy to come play it. Then you get a passing lane. Charles is just dropping way back into the lane and picking off that pass. 90-55, 10-16 to go in the game. Carter trying to defense Jordan. Punched away by Ortiz. Michael was definitely going to put it up. Never a question. He'll go to the line. Michael Jordan having a quiet night, only eight points. This is really a relief for Michael Jordan to not have to carry the weight of the world on his shoulders. He's commented on it several times. The fact that he really enjoys the fact that everybody here can score and he can simply be part of the team, even though he's unquestionably the greatest player in the world today. Here are the scoring leaders from the tournament. Oscar Schmidt. People probably will get a chance to see him Sunday in the gold medal game if things hold the way we think they will. And Oscar is a tremendous shooter. He is the Chris Mullen of the Brazilian team. Lopez to Carter for three. James Carter. Formerly of the USBL and the CBA. So Michael Jordan now has moved to point guard. Magic Johnson playing forward, going a little high screen roll like Michael just turned the corner. Foul on Puerto Rico, waved that basket off. It's on Lopez, Puerto Rico Lopez. This is an offensive set. You see the Pistons run a lot of with their, with their guards. Spot up a three-point shooter in the corner. You have Magic in one corner. Michael playing screen roll. Out ahead to Carter. Look who ran it down. The center. David Robinson's unbelievable speed. We've seen some, uh, some telestrator plays that you've done during the regular season where he will start behind the break and then end up scoring all the way. And we're about to get wholesale substitutions for the United States. They're going to substitute five players at the same time. on Patrick Ewing. We're going to get Drexler, Mullen, Pippen, 
Leitner and Malone into the game. That's your second team for, for tonight. This crowd very appreciative that Clyde Drexler played tonight. He missed the game Wednesday as they drained fluid from his sore knee. I well, that's going to be a concern for Clyde Drexler. This season he's had problems draining that knee, and now in the Turner of the Americas, he's had it done again. A long wear and tear of another season trying to get Portland back to the NBA Finals, and we know that he definitely is the guy that's going to have to carry them there once again if they're good, going to beat teams like Phoenix now. But uh, a knee must be a little bit of source of concern for them because once you have to start having that drain, it be a, a chronic problem. Malone into Pippen on the given while ago, and Leitner with a beautiful move. He switched hands when he was blocked on the right side and reversed it, and that's the first two of the game for Christian Leitner. Now every player who's eligible to play, that's except for Bird and Stockton, have scored for Team USA. Carter doesn't get it to go. Ball. Right now, the team that the United States has on the floor, Pippen and Drexler, is going to have to come back and help on the board. Chris Mullen, not a strong rebounder. Carl Malone can defensive rebound. He likes, in many instances, to get out and run the break. And Leitner, uh, learning how to rebound against this kind of competition. So the United States is going to have to make a commitment now to get to the defensive board against the big, strong Puerto Rican lineup. I was going to say some players on the floor who can really run the floor, but every player <laughs> on this team can. So it goes without saying. Rebus tried the spin move against Malone, but he stopped it to Ortiz. Kept alive by Soto. It's just a nightmare once you get down into the paint. Well, it's almost like they're playing six against five. Wherever you go, there's two guys. To oh, no. The game is too far out of reach for this guy to dive in my lap. <laughs> I could understand it if it was a two-point game. <laughs> Doug Collins meet Federico Lopez. Yes, Federico. Too old to make that move to get out of your way. 94-60. 34-point U.S. lead. Eight minutes to go in the game. Malone just pulls up for the jumper, which he'll hit most of the time. Here's Carter to Soto with the jam. Soto's a 24-year-old, 6'7 forward. He's one of the young guard. This is an aging Puerto Rico team in international play. They're trying to get it younger. They have a couple of young players like him and like Cassiano. Drexler over Lopez. Two three-pointers for Drexler, two for Mullen, one for Johnson. Magic in this game. Now Leitner playing Ortiz very well. They did a good job that time. He did not allow the contact to knock him on his heels. He stayed up strong, then got a hand up in the face, did not take the foul. Very good play by Leitner. Lopez fouls Clyde Drexler. On number five, Federico Lopez is third personal. 15 foul, time out. Here's our Converse game summary for you. U.S. has 13 to 2 on steals, 32 to 4 on fast breaks, 46 to 22 on the bench, and you could summarize the game in a, several other categories too. But that'll give you a little idea of the tremendous defense and speed and balance of this team from the United States. And here is the only collegian on the team, Christian Leitner, scoring prior to tonight's game. Doug asked Christian if playing on the Dream Team would hasten his development in the NBA, and he said, in fact. Uh, he thought it would because he said not only at Minnesota but around the league because let's face it I have seen the best there they have to offer. Yeah, he said I played against the best there is. He said I think it will help me. See there's another reach in by Christian. That's an area though and I've talked about it that he's going to have to do. He's going to have to get much better at. 6.51 to go in this ball game. 97-62. Team USA. You're going to be playing against bigger guys that can move and drive the ball to the basket. You've got to slide, square them up, and you can't reach in. Those reach fouls are the ones that get you in trouble. With teams at the free throw line, as you see, Jose Ortiz will shoot the one-on-one. -on -one. Jose has had a pretty good ball game tonight. 
It's only four for 12, but he's got 14 points and four rebounds. John, I need some help. The 19-year-old Cassiano is in the backcourt with Lopez. For Puerto Rico, there is Jose Ortiz, who's Pac-10 MVP. He's 28 years old, 6'10", 235. Drafted by the Utah Jazz. And to Leitner. Power move inside and the foul. I think Christian either got kicked or maybe rolled his ankle a little bit also. Gonna have the opportunity for the three-point play. That was a nice, nice entry pass, and Christian went strong to the basket. I liked it here because he didn't mess around with the ball. He just went up strong. I thought early in the in the tournament he was a little unsure around the basket. He was pump faking and not finishing the shot. That time a nice power move by Christian Leitner, who does not get the three-point play if he missed the free throw opportunity. Chuck Daly said Christian Leitner reminded him some of uh, Bill Lane Beer. He says he's got that meanness in him that a post player needs to have and Lane Beer, while he's had a great career, never, particularly late in his career, has not shown the post-up strength that Leitner has, actually. And I think also, too, what Chuck was referring to was Lane Beer was the kind of guy that would go on the road and deflect pressure by by being the villain, and, and Christian really did that at Duke this year. The many road games that they played in the tough arenas, he would be the target of a lot of ridicule, and he accepted it and hit big shots and really, I thought, helped his team in that way. They knew they could go to him in that kind of environment. Ramon Dalmau, the head coach, Puerto Rico. Malone with the rebound off the Ortiz miss. 99-64. 6.22 to go in the ballgame. Pippen. Passed inside to Drexler for the reverse. Just another unselfish play. Scotty Pippen had the wide open shot, made the extra pass. We say it over and over and over again, but that really characterizes this United States team. Unselfish, make the extra pass, get the easy score. Soto gets the ball in the post, and every time he does, it's raked away from him. They're going to try it again if they get the entry pass unsuccessfully this time. Here's the 19-year-old. A lot of skill. Well, he's fearless, too. He takes the ball right to the basket. The left-hander scores from the baseline. And the foul is on Team USA, away from the ball. USA foul. Take a look now. Chris Mullen makes the quick reversal pass to Scotty Pippen. Looks like he's going to take the open shot. And here comes Drexler with a slash cut. Finds him underneath for the easy reverse layup. Eight assists for Pippen in the ball game. And Scotty said that his role here on this team, the way he sees it, is to see the floor, run the team, and distribute the ball. And now with John Stockton out of the game, he's actually the backup point guard, both he and Michael. So Scotty is one of the one of the better all-round players on this team because he he realizes that he doesn't need to score, but he plays a great defense, the long arms. There's Soto scoring. Just I say that, Scotty throws the ball out of bounds. 101-68. Larry Bird will not play in this game. There's a chance that he'll play on Sunday, but because of his sore lower back, he doesn't even know about that for sure. This could be the last time we'll see Larry Bird on TNT. If we see John Stockton next time we go to the bench also on his right leg, you'll see he has an electric stimulator, which what is done, it's shocking the area to try to prevent or try to make the healing process faster. Pippen from Drexler. See Scotty up defending. Cassiano missed the three. Nice rebound by Leitner. That's what I like to see from Christian Leitner. That's what they're going to need from him in Minnesota. The big power rebound. Mullen gets it off to Drexler, who is fouled. Yeah, we've watched a lot of great basketball. Listen to this one. Well, Portland saw too much of that in the NBA playoffs here. I'm surprised they're cheering for Scottie Pippen. Here's what you're talking about, about Stockton there on his right leg. Yeah, I asked him about that, and he said it's just a constant electrical stimulation through his leg there onto the bone to hopefully that will speed up the healing process. I think John feels he's going to be able to play in Barcelona. 
it's not an injury that uh, is going to get any worse, but it is painful, and if he can play with the pain, then he'll be there. Jerry Sloan says he'll be there, knowing how he plays with the pain. There's Cassiano, the 19-year-old, driving and laying it in. I like his moves. He's a smooth player. The thing I like about what Jerry Sloan said the other night when we were talking to him, he said he realizes how important this is to John Stockton. He would never, in his wildest dreams, try to discourage John Stockton from going to Barcelona. Leitner spins down to the lane, goes to the left hand for the finger roll. Oh, you like the looks. How about the difference in Leitner's play, even in this tournament? Well, he's growing up. He, he's, he's not in awe anymore of these guys. He's starting to feel a part of this team. And I think that's very important. They've done a good job of, of making Christian feel a part of it. They look for him. They try to get him involved. They jerked his warm-up trousers down when he was introduced. See, Christian would not have taken that shot the other day. He pulls up and takes the three, but he would not have looked for that shot the other night. And as you said, he is the victim of some practical jokes, but he understands that's part of being a rookie, and how he reacts to it is very important. It'll, it'll let him know whether he's going to be in the fraternity or not. He doused the whole bench with his squirt gun. <laughs> Speaking of fraternity, that was Peyote with the miss. Pippen, the bounce pass to Drexler. Uh, Pippen knows who to feed here in Portland. They're going to start like they're going to start clamoring for a trade if they keep looking at this. I'm sure Portland would love to have Scotty Pippen. <laughs> 108-70. 316 to go in this game. Pippen, seven points, eight rebounds, nine assists. Soto with a nice bounce pass. There's an example of the international rule. If you lob the ball in, you can catch it and then bank it in like that. You can't slam dunk it if it's lobbed in above the rim. Pippen fouled on the rock. Here's Pippen to Drexel. Win in Portland, get it to the Blazers. That's exactly what Scotty Pippen does. And Clyde Drexler with a beautiful finger roll. 255 remaining in this semifinal game. USA 108, Puerto Rico 72 in the semifinals. All four of the teams are playing tonight have advanced to Barcelona. Brazil and Venezuela joining these two teams. And by the way, speaking of uh, Puerto Rico, as you look at the Puerto Rican flag, and Portland, Ramon Ramos, who is a former Portland Trailblazer, a rookie center who was seriously injured in an automobile accident a year and a half ago, is living with his parents in their home in Canovanas, Puerto Rico. Probably watching tonight, there's his coach, Seton Hall, P.J. Carlissimo, and we might report to you that Ramos is much improved. He's walking on his own, riding a bike, lifting weights, even shooting the basketball some. Still has some problems with his conversational ability, but it's improving gradually in that area as well, and we wish him the best, and I know P.J. would like us to pass that along. So in this tournament, Bob, the United States have been shooting 63%, their opponents 37% tonight. The United States shooting 63%, their opponents 37%. So I guess average game for the United States tonight for both them and their opponents. Just an average game. Another walk in the park. I wonder what it feels like to sit over there and win every game by 40 points. 251 remaining in this game. The U.S. will play the winner of Brazil, Venezuela in the championship for this. There are medals involved in the Tournament of the Americas, the gold, silver, and bronze, but it will not affect the seeding in the Olympics. Olympic 12 teams will be divided into two 16 pools, much like the teams were divided in this tournament. Drexler putting on a show for the home crowd. He has 15. You know, Bob, while we get a chance also to, we want to send our best wishes and thoughts and prayer to Jim Valvano. There's a lot of friends here in Portland. We've talked to the United States team, Coach K, PJ. They all ask us to pass it along, and we, we just wish him well in this tough time, and, his, and our thoughts and prayers are with them. Javier Colon. And James Carter, the guards for Puerto Rico, outmatched everywhere. We thought the Puerto Rican team would do a little bit better rebounding because they are big with Ortiz and Edgar Leon and Ramon Rivas down there. But even the rebounding is 45-26 USA favor. That was Soto scoring for Puerto Rico. If there's anything to it, this is the closest game this late that the U.S. has been involved in. <laughs> It's time 
for our Miller Genuine Draft play of the game. We'll find out what this is together. There are so many. Well, let me guess. It's the Charles Barkley steal and the throw ahead to Patrick Ewing, the Magic Johnson, back to David Robinson. The ball never hits the floor. There's one, there's two, there's three. Never hits the floor. And that sort of signifies the greatness of this team. Charles, Sir Charles Barkley, now of the Phoenix Suns. Cotton Fitzsimmons said if Charles wanted to play golf every day, Cotton was available. Now that he's no longer the coach, Paul Westfall might have something to say about that. Charles, you saw the Band-Aid on his head in case you dialed in late here. Charles Barkley fell on the baseline, cut his head on the edge of a camera, took one stitch, they bandaged him up, and he did return to the game. 113 to 76. TNT began basketball coverage back in October with Magic Johnson and the Lakers in Paris, France. We're concluding our season of NBA coverage. This Tournament of the Americas with this NBA All-Star team to play on the Olympic team here in July. And Carl Malone has 20. So we had Magic in October. He retired in the middle, got Magic again here in July. And it's been a tremendous season on behalf of all the TNT family. We thank everybody in the NBA has helped us with our coverage of nearly 90 games, if you count these tournament games and NBA playoffs and such. We'll be back at you again with the NBA next year starting in November. Yeah, I'm, I'm lobbying for you to go to Japan, that 13-hour flight, and open up the season with Houston and Seattle. I'll, I'd love to watch you on TNT back here. Kanishiwa. How about, I'm practicing my language. Oh. Oh. Seattle and Houston will be over there. That's the international aspect of this NBA, as you see, just by the demonstration of the dream team here, is certainly proving to be a reality in the dream of David Stern. 119 to 78. 15 seconds to go in this ball game. That's a three-point shot from Cologne. It's another, another difference in the NBA game is the clock can wind out with you throwing the ball in bounds. So under five seconds, the clock, you can just hold it out of bounds. United States with a 38-point victory. Well, that's the closest one so far. <laughs> and now the winner of Brazil, Venezuela, will go on to meet the United States in the championship game in this tournament. I want to point out to you once again that four teams advanced from this tournament of the uh, Americas to the Olympics. And it did not matter whether you won or finished fourth here in terms of advancing. So the semifinal and the championship game are for a medal here, but are not for any seeding in the Olympics. In the Olympics, there have been four teams that were already announced, and that was Spain, Angola, Australia, and China, who won their zones, and Spain, the host country. And, of course, we also have the four teams from here, the United States, Brazil, Puerto Rico, and Venezuela. They'll be joining the four teams who win in the European Championship. So Magic Johnson had himself a whale of a game again tonight, and he's going to join us here at our broadcast table talk with us a little bit about this game and it's tough for magic to get all the way over here because the photographers and the players are sharing their adulation to Irvin Johnson but he will be here shortly <laughs> 1981 38 point win you see us and magic making his way in here right now as he high fives the crowd poses for a photograph <laughs> Magic, thank you for joining us. You've already had experience with these things this year. You've already had your experience with the headphones, so I'll let you handle that. Congratulations again, and the smile seems to never leave your lips since you've been out here in Portland. No, uh, it's, uh, it's just like uh, being, home, uh, being away from home for a long time. Now I'm back on that hardwood. I'm, I'm back home again, and I feel comfortable and feel really good. Just being one of the boys again has been the, the ultimate dream and feeling and also wearing this USA jersey. It's been really clear, however, that you are the leader of this team, and this is something that doesn't just get announced. I mean, the, you have to have the peer respect to have that, and it's very evident when you're on the floor. Do you feel that kind of respect on this specific team? I definitely do. Uh, they look to me for the leadership, and uh, I try to, uh, when we're not going like we 
you know, sometimes we don't get going, so we had to pick the defense up, and I say, let's pick up higher, or, or maybe we're not getting a good shot, so I had to slow us down and say, okay, Michael, somebody take over for one second, get us a good shot, before we can get back into a flow or rhythm. So, I, Michael and the guys look to me for that, and I, I try to provide that leadership. You know, Magic, one thing that really impresses me is you've played in so many All-Star games, you've played in games with great talent before, but you guys are not turning the ball over. You're not trying to make this so spectacular play that the game is getting ragged. I think that's a real credit because in many instances when you play against inferior opponents, you try to juice it up too much and the game gets ugly. You guys have not done that at all. Right. Well, first of all, we don't want to disrespect anybody. Second of all, we, we know that we have to play within the team. And uh, you're, you're right because when you try to do something for yourself or try to pump the fans up, it usually results in a turnover. And then you're not playing good basketball and what we want to do we want to play good basketball and a lot of people have said see they thought we weren't going to be able to play together too many ego we needed more basketball but it hasn't been the case and we played together and everybody's playing their role and that's the key right now magic uh, we got to relive that great celtics laker championship series and your baby hook shot in the <laughs> lane and if, when you took the shot i said on the air thank you for showing us that again well, the what? difference is, though, this is over Ortiz and uh, Rivas, not Bird, McHale, and Perry. <laughs> <laughs> and it went for the championship, That's too. Right. <laughs> slight difference. <laughs> yes, a slight difference in talent <laughs> and a slight difference in the situation, too. We needed that. But, um, you know, I'm getting a chance to, to be out here again. And I tell you, it's, it, this week has been the ultimate for me. Um, it's just been great. It's just... I don't know what to say. You know, I'm so happy to be back playing. I can't resist asking you this. You've got to be thinking because your timing is so good, your conditioning is good, you're having so much fun about next year back in the league. Well, of course, you know, it's run through my mind. And what I want to do after this is over, sit down with my wife, and we sit down and discuss it. Usually I make decisions by myself, but I have a wife now, <laughs> so we had to sit down and, and discuss it. But things are going good right now, and hopefully if they continue, then, you know, the eyes are probably switching in the favor of returning but uh thank you just guys for having me on and uh look forward to you know seeing you later magic i tell you as a as a fan now i i could watch you play forever and i i pray that you'll be back out there again next year you you're you're the best thank you i appreciate it thanks to all the fans too for your prayers and everything Irvin magic johnson and team usa with the victory over puerto rico in the semifinals they're on their way to barcelona and the gold we'll be right back